Let us turn in our Bibles, and um, we'll read God's Word. Um, Matthew chapter 25. This will be a familiar portion of Scripture to you. Uh, Matthew chapter 25. I want to read the first 13 verses of it, please. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 25, starting at verse 1. Matthew chapter 25, starting at verse 1. Let's hear God's precious living word. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. And they, and, and they, they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at, mid at midnight there was a great cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore. For ye know neither the day or the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Let's ask God for his blessing upon our meeting this morning. Let us pray. Our dear Father in heaven, we thank you again for your living word. We thank you, Lord, that we can read it each and every one in our own language. We thank you, Lord, for this passage of Scripture this morning. And Lord, we pray now that as we come to take a brief look at it, we pray, Heavenly Father, that you will undertake, undertake for those who will hear. We pray for any, Lord, that's in here and not saved. Our prayer is, Lord, this morning you will speak to their souls. And we pray for those who are saved. We pray, Lord, that you will have a word for us, a word of encouragement, a word of joy. Lord, that you'll bless us each and every one. We pray, I pray for myself, Lord. Lord, we have undertaken to speak on your word. Now we pray, Lord, that you'll undertake for me. Bless us, Lord, for it is in thy name we ask it. Amen. Marriage is a wonderful thing. It's a great event in the life of those who, who get married, who meet a partner in life, and I done the same thing. Only just a couple of years ago. Well, I wish it was a couple of years ago. Back nearly 20 years ago now. It's hard to believe I'm that old. I know, don't be shocked. But there, I met my wife, Beulah. And then we got married. And that was a great event. And for those of us who, have, who are married, who God has blessed us in that way, that is a great event in our lives. A great time of a coming together. A great time of excitement, lots of planning, for the women anyway, lots of organizing, lots of, there's lots of busyness and the dress to be ordered and the suits to be got and lots of things to be made ready for that day when two become one, united under Christ. Today in our land, there's a great attack on the Christian marriage. The world seeks to destroy what God has once ordained for man and woman. This world seeks to destroy God's blessing that he has given us. Here in our passage today, and I'm not going to keep you too long, you'll be glad about that. Here in our passage today, we have the picture of a great marriage. But this is no ordinary marriage. 
This is not an earthly marriage. This is a spiritual marriage. The bridegroom that has been talked about here is the Lord Jesus. And he's coming. And the people have been told, prepare yourself for the bridegroom is coming. Be ready to meet him. This is a great event. And if we were to go back to the times when, when this passage of Scripture and to the wedding that was happening, happening at that time, and the bridegroom would have walked the streets in a great procession, a procession of people would have followed to the marriage feast, to the bride's, bridegroom's house where they would have had the marriage feast. We want to take a look very briefly at this great event, this great time that was happening. The title I've put on my sermon this morning, and you'll be maybe a wee bit surprised at this. Maybe you won't. I've put the great separation as the title of my sermon this morning. Because you see, as, as we think of a marriage here on earth, yes, it's a happy time. It's a time of two coming together. But within, the mari- within a marriage here on earth, there is a great separation. What is the great separation? A lady is separated from her parents. And that can be a sad time for us old dads. Tears can come. I haven't experienced that yet, but I've seen it happening. And it can be a sad time. There is a great separation of families on the, on the man's side. Yes, there is a separation there too. And the man leaves his family and these two become one. And they begin a family and they start as one unit under Christ together. This morning we want to look at the great separation that there is tied up within this passage of God's word in Matthew Chapter 25. First, we want to look at the great event. What is the great event that it is talking about here? Verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. The great event that is set for the future. A time when Christ shall return. As we look look around our world today, no one's worried about Christ coming. Everyone's quite content. Everyone's quite happy with the way they're going in life. But dear friends, today, my Bible tells me there's a great event coming. And it's the return of the Savior to this world. And whenever we think of that great event this morning, it's so easy to think back Oh, then the Lord Jesus came as a little baby. And this great event's going to be a wonderful time, and for some it will. But you know, dear people today, in this great event that's coming, the Lord Jesus is not coming as a little baby. He's coming as a judge of this world. The great event. Oh, it will happen. Why can I stand here and say tonight that it will happen, or this morning, that it will happen? Turn back in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall, right throughout the scriptures, whenever... The Lord talks and and reveals to us in his word about this great event happening. It's something that shall happen. There's no doubt. Oh, the world will tell you many things this morning, dear friend. But it's an event that shall happen. And then shall the end come. It's an event that will happen. Look at verse 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Here is a great picture of the bridegroom coming. The great light coming from the west to the east. And there it shines, it goes straight through. So shall the Son of Man come. He's coming. Maybe you're sitting in here this morning and you're thinking to yourself, oh, well... I hear what you're saying, but you know what? I'm not really worried. Dear friend, 
The bridegroom is coming. There's no doubt about it. Lots of people in our world today will tell you all that there. Only an old book. Don't listen to anything that's in that. You know what? You don't have to go too far. And you can see lots of the things that Christ has said would be the signs of his coming to this world that are written in this book. And they're happening right before our eyes. I was thinking that, in fact, I was saying to somebody one day, that's not that many years ago from I was just a teenager and a young person growing up. And I can remember people talking about things that would happen. And I can remember saying, they'll never happen in our lifetime. Do you know what? They're happening. The signs are there. The bridegroom is coming. This great event is going to happen. Something else about this great event. Everyone shall know it. Everyone. Everyone right across this whole world shall know that this great event is happening. Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. Tell me, will everyone see that? The sun darkened. You know, that reminds me of a time where lots of people will have lots of fear in them. Because if the sun's darkened, the moon won't shine. There will be pure darkness. Will everyone know? Of course they will know. And the moon shall not give her light. There you go. And the stars shall fall from heaven. You see, there's a great picture here. Anything that brings light to this world is going to be done away with. There's going to be a great darkness in our world. And the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Oh, there'll be nobody sleeping. Right across our world, everyone shall know that this great event is happening. You know, many people say, well, I know when it's going to happen. I heard somebody this week and they were saying, oh, I, on such and such a date, such and such a time, Christ returning. But you know, I'm glad this morning I don't know. Because that's the way Christ has appointed it. This great event that's going to happen, it will happen. Everyone shall know it, but we don't know when. We don't know when. Verse 36 of Matthew chapter 24 but of that day and hour knoweth no man. Knoweth no man. No. Not the angels in heaven even know. But my Father only. Here's a great event that's coming. We don't know when. Young person sitting in the meeting this morning. I want you to listen to this. As you look at your life, you have everything to live for. But dear friend, there's an event coming, dear young person. There's an event coming that you don't know when it's coming. I don't know when it's coming. Your pastor doesn't know when it's coming. The only one that knows is God. A great event that's going to be fast. How can I tell you that? Well, if you turn over away over to the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelations, and the Lord Jesus Christ is saying to his people, Behold, I come quickly, verse 7. Verse 12, Behold, I come quickly. Verse 20, Surely I come quickly. You see, some people in our world today, they believe, Oh, well, whenever the Lord comes, we'll have time. Sure, we'll ask Christ then. We'll have piles of time. You know, it'll be no time. Christ is coming, and he's coming quickly. In a moment of time, in a twinkling of an eye, we shall behold him. We shall see him. A great event. One last thing I want to talk about this great event. The center focus of this great event. We've read it there in the passage of Scripture and this is the center of all that we believe as Christians. 
Verse 1, the bridegroom. The Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 5, the bridegroom. Who's that? That's the Lord Jesus. Everything is focused on him coming to this world. Verse 6. And at midnight there was a cry, Behold the bridegroom cometh. The Lord Jesus. Verse 10. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. The bridegroom, the Lord Jesus. Verse 11. Afterward came also the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord. Who's the Lord? What's that? That's the bridegroom. That's the Lord Jesus. What is our central focus? It's the Lord Jesus. Dear friend, this morning I want to ask you, as we think of this great event that's going to happen, what is your central focus? It should be Christ this morning. In a few moments we'll be coming to the Lord's table. The central focus is Christ. The Lord Jesus. Is the Lord Jesus your central focus? Trust he is this morning. Secondly, we want to come and we want to look quickly at the foolish virgins here. And I put a wee title on this. The professing church. The professing church. Oh, whenever we read verse 1, it says, and the, the, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. But whenever we think of these bridegrooms coming to meet the, or the, the, these virgins coming to meet the bridegroom, they're all the same. They look all the same. It's, it's as if there's no difference in them. Here they've been invited. They've, they've heard the message and they've been invited to this great feast that is going to happen. And they have prepared themselves to a certain degree, some of them, and they have went out. There's no difference in them. They look the same. They dress the same. They're carrying the same things. And you know, that's a wee bit like the professing church today. Lots of people, and they, they get involved in church, and they, and, and they look good. They look just like everyone else. They hear the same message. Here in, here in Matthew chapter 25 and verse 6, and at midnight, at midnight there was a great cry went out, Behold! All these, bra all these virgins, they heard the same message. You know, that's like many of our churches today. There's lots of people, and they sit in our pews, and they put on their tie, and they put on their best dress, and their hat, and they do all these things, which are all necessary, I believe. But yet they're not saved. They only have a good profession. profession. There's nothing more than that within them. Why do I say that? Well, they're unprepared. Verse 3. And they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Right throughout the scriptures, the oil represents the Holy Spirit. And here is these virgins and they're going out and, and they're not sure at what time the bridegroom's going to come. They don't know the bridegroom could come at any time. But here they go and they go out. And they think to themselves, oh, you know what? I'll be all right. I don't need much oil. I'll go on ahead. And I'll just be like the rest of them. And surely one way and another, we'll get into the great feast. But you know, there was no entrance to the feast for those virgins. They were just, they just had an outward appearance so they had. Oh yes, you can read on down in verse 8. And for a little time, they went to trim their lamps and they discovered the oil has gone out. And maybe within our churches, right across our land, and many people, for a time they look good. And for a time you could look at them and say, well, there, there's a great upstanding young Christian person there. But you know, dear friend, when the time comes when we have to stand before the living God, it will only be an outward profession of their faith. I wonder, am I talking to someone here this morning? And you tick all the boxes in church. 
You're involved in everything that you can be involved in. But within your heart, you have never received Christ as your Savior. Oh, there's a great outward appearance for everybody else to see. But wait, I warn you, I want to warn you this morning. Christ sees your heart this morning. He sees your heart. These virgins here, they realized the call had came. They had heard the message. And they were getting ready to go out and no oil. And they said, oh, to everyone else sitting around them, give us some of your oil so we can go too. And they said, no, we can't. And you know, I believe that's a picture of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I can never get you into heaven. Robert can never get you into heaven. William can never get you into heaven. You see, there's coming a day, the Bible tells us, in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. I can never do nothing for you on that day. You're hearing the message this morning. But are you saved? Maybe it looks good. The scripture teaches us in the Old Testament, examine yourself. And I would ask each and every one of you this morning, including myself, to examine ourselves to see whether we be in the faith or not, whether we be in God's way. Oh, it's so easy to do things for other people. But what about Christ? Just for a second to talk about this professing church. I want to look at the deadly outcome that they had. Matthew chapter 25, verse 10. And while they went in to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went, 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 went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. You know, that reminds me of Noah. That takes me way back to the times of Noah. And there Noah went into the ark. And what did he do? What did God do? God shut the door. That meant everyone who was outside could not get in. Dear friend, are you outside of the throne room of God this morning? Are you saved or are you lost this morning? Have you Christ in your heart? Are you filled with the Spirit of God? Or are you only pretending? Because, dear friend, if you're only pretending this morning, do you know what's wrong? The door is shut to you and you cannot get in. These virgins, they made a desperate call in verse 11. Lord, Lord, Open to us. You see, in those days, whenever the bridegroom came to the house, the bridegroom shut the door and the door was sealed. No one else could get into the marriage feast. And you know, that's the same in heaven. When the Lord shall return, when the bridegroom come, the Lord Jesus Christ, when he comes, the door will be shut and there'll be no entrance to heaven. I don't care how good you have been. I don't care how much money you pay to the church. I don't care any of those things. It's about your soul this morning. What about your soul? That bit of you that lives for all of eternity. Is it shut out of heaven this morning? The devastating answer that was given to them. I know you not. Oh, dear friend, is that you this morning? What if Christ was to call you home this morning and there as you stand before him in the judgment tree, seat of God, will he say to you, I know you not. Depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire. That's hell. Could that be someone in here this morning? C.H. Spurgeon said, I have a great need of Christ. Dear friend, you have a great need of Christ this morning. Why do I say that? Christ gave himself on the cross for you. There he died. He was punished. He was bruised. He was mocked. He was put to death for you. You have a great need of Christ this morning if you're unsaved. He went on to say, C.H. Spurgeon, I have a great Christ for my need. 
You see, dear friend, this morning, Christ is the only one that can take, give you that entrance into heaven. When he comes or calls, what will it be said of you? Oh, we have lots of empty professions. We have lots of people who profess great things. But dear friend, if you've never come to the foot of the old rugged cross, you're like these old foolish virgins. You have not Christ. You're lost. You're shut out. What are you really saying to God? Well, there's a verse came to my mind. Psalm 14, verse 1. The fool has said in their heart, there is no God. If you're sitting in here this morning, and maybe you'll stand up and say, I believe there's a God. I believe the Lord Jesus Christ died. But really, dear friend, if you're unsaved this morning, what you're saying in your heart is, there's no God. Because you're not trusting in him. The fool has said in their heart there is no God. Here was five foolish virgins. Dear friend, what's it going to profit you if you gain the whole world but lose your soul? It's going to profit you nothing. Only being separated from the living God. There's also the possessing church here. The wise the wise, those who were prepared. What did they do? They took oil with them. Here was a group of virgins and and they had accepted the Lord Jesus. That's the picture that's been painted here. And they were living for Christ. They were full of the Spirit of God. They had made great preparation. Verse 4, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Here was a prepared people. And dear friend, this morning, can you not sing with joy in your heart? If you have asked the Lord Jesus Christ to be your Savior this morning, you are a prepared person. What are you prepared for? You're prepared for glory. And you know, sometimes, and I'm the same, I'm no different than anybody else. Sometimes we get lots of these things of this world and we let them get in on us and we get, get down and we get all grumpy and cross. Well, I do anyway, I don't know about you. And, and, and things annoy us. You know, we really shouldn't let anything annoy us. Because the scripture teaches us that all things work together for good to them that love God. We have the promise of a home in heaven. Does that not fill your heart full of joy this morning? We're just not a professing people, but we actually possess the spirit of God within each and every one of us who are saved. Oh, what great joy we should be singing. These virgins, they were an accepted people. They were accepted. They were accepted into the marriage feast. There there they were going to receive all the blessings that the bridegroom had laid out for them. Tells us that in 25 verse 10 there of Matthew, that they were taken in to the great marriage feast of the Lamb. And you know, for those of us who are saved, we have the promise of a home in heaven. We are going to be with the Savior for all of eternity. What great joy that should fill us. We should be the happiest people on earth. Life at best is very brief, like the falling of a leaf. And for those of us who are saved, we are in time. It's only a short time. Think of eternity. The joy of living with Christ my Savior for all of eternity. The average lifespan of man, three score years and ten, seventy. My father's 94 this year. He has been blessed. But you know, someday he'll go home to glory. So will I. So will you if you're saved. And there we're going to spend not 94 years, not a hundred years. 10,000 years hasn't even begun. Eternity. Does that not fill you with joy this morning? It's a prepared place. The Lord Jesus, he told his disciples, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there ye may be where Jesus is. Oh dear, unsafe friend, you see what you're missing? You see what you're missing? Where Jesus is. The Lord Jesus. 
the bridegroom. Oh, that should fill us full of joy. But you know, whenever we think of this door and how it was shut and the foolish were shut out, what, what happened to the wise? Well, they were shut in. They were shut in. Nothing could harm them there. There they were receiving the blessings of Christ. They were telling the children, God shall wipe all tears from their eyes. You know, and that's a wonderful picture of heaven. A place of much joy where nothing can harm us. We're shut in. We're shut in with Christ. Noah was shut in. It didn't matter what was going on all around him. He was shut in the ark because God closed the door. God kept them and blessed them. And you know, dear, saved this morning. It's the same with us. We can be shut in with Christ. We will be shut in with Christ on that great day when the bridegroom cometh. Shut in to the marriage feast of the Lamb with the Lord Jesus Christ for all of eternity. But here, in the very last verse of what we read, There is a warning given. A warning given. Watch, therefore. You see, we need to be watching. We need to be aware. We need to be careful with all that is going on around us. Oh yes, for those of us who are saved, we have the promise of a home in heaven. Doesn't matter what happens on this earth. We're going home to glory soon. To see a mansion fair. But dear friend, if you're unsafe tonight, you ought to watch yourself. You ought to be careful. The time of separation is coming. And I'm not talking of a separation of family. And yes, there could be a separation of family there as well. I'm talking of the separation from Christ. From your Savior who gave his life for you. These virgins, were, they were separated. The foolish couldn't be where the wise were. The door was shut. There was no crossing the line. They weren't getting in. It tells us there in chapter 24, verse 38 to 42, about how the separation shall happen. For, in those, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And they knew not until the flood came. There's a great warning there. It was sudden. Then people, they didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came. And it was too late. And took them all away. Do you hear the, the speed of that? The flood came and took them all away. So also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two be in the field. One shall be taken and the other left. Moment of time. A time of separation. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken. The other left. In a moment of time. A great separation. Verse 42. Watch therefore For ye know not. Ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Oh, there's a great separation coming. And you know, if you're unsaved here this morning, you can't go into glory and say it. I was never warned. And I'm not talking about through the foolishness of anything that I've said up here this morning. You have read the scriptures. You have heard God's word being read out and you have been warned. The bridegroom cometh. Will your robes be white, pure and white in the blood of the Lamb? Will they be? You know, I'm going to finish with a question or two. Firstly, where do you stand before the bridegroom today? Oh, he's coming as judge. He's coming to take his church. 
the possessing people, those who are filled with the Spirit of God, back to heaven. But he will judge the wicked. He will judge the lost. There will be a great separation. Where do you stand this morning? Do you know the answer to this problem is so simple that even these children that sat at the front this morning could understand it? Come to the Savior. Make no delay. Here in his word, he has shown us the way. He in our midst, he's sta- standing today tenderly saying, come. Dear friend, there's a great separation coming. Whether your number be called before Christ returns or whether he returns in his glory, the question will be, what will it be with you? Where will you spend eternity? Dear friend, I want to ask you, I want you to ask yourself that question this morning. Where am I going to spend eternity? What about my soul? Don't worry about the things of this. Don't worry about your friends. There's only one answer. There's Christ. There's one answer to this world's problems. It's Christ. Will you not come to him today? So simple. Ask the Lord Jesus to forgive you. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou, I'm going to change that word because I want to personalize this this morning. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And then there'll be no separation. There'll only be acceptance in the glory. Where will you spend eternity? Eternity.